Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and this podcast is dedicated to the spirits who believe life is meant to be magical and fun. Here we look at advanced viewpoints of the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. Here we venture to share the mysteries of self and reality. My primary purpose is to reawaken your sense of fascination and awe towards life, and to shatter your rigid belief systems and ways of seeing the world, to wake you up and allow you to control your reality, to unleash potential and open unlimited possibilities of wealth, health, and relationships in your life. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the health revolution. If you've listened to this podcast so far, hopefully you got a chance to listen to the episode on what is the reality revolution. And I do believe we are experiencing a quantum shift in the, in the world right now, a new reality revolution. We're becoming aware of the ways that we create our own reality. We're beginning to explore experiential quantum physics and meditation and hypnosis and Qigong and reality transurfing and sensory deprivation tanks and virtual reality meditations and mind technologies. So many new discoveries are coming out with quantum computers starting to understand the way that the body works and CRISPR and new technologies and energy psychology. We're literally undergoing a massive transformation in the way that we understand our body with biohacking and neurohacking and brainwave manipulation. And there is something that's happening now. We talk a lot about our health when you watch TV and politics about healthcare system and it's broken. The healthcare system is broken. But what if you can heal yourself from within? And what if the revolution that we're coming to is not some drug or treatment that we get, but as a true understanding of the power of our minds and our ability to transform our own health? Because that is the secret. You know about the placebo effect. The most scientifically proven effect of all things is the placebo effect because it's used in literally every research trial. And the placebo effect is increasing. Research is showing now that the placebo effect is increasing and it's making it so difficult they cannot research new medicines. So we're becoming even more powerful with our own placebo effect. We're getting in touch with what's at the core of our hearts and the power, this, this multidimensional interface that's beginning to happen right now is allowing us to heal our bodies. And it's super fascinating. Before I did this episode, I was working on this. And the other day, uh, I first, I, one day I went out to, to breakfast and I just started getting super queasy and sick and, and I went to the bathroom, but it wasn't changed. It was very unusual feeling. I didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't sit still and I ate some breakfast and I felt better. And a couple days later, I just got super sticks and it wouldn't go away. It was like I, my skin turned cold. I was sweating profusely. I, 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 my breathing was bad. And I, it, it was that kind of pain where you can't do anything else. Like it, it, and I, I've, there are many pregnant women out there and I have the greatest respect for, for them because it's just a constant pain that you can't get rid of and it's affecting your whole body. And so I I didn't know what to do. And I was truly concerned. Do I just make a doctor's appointment? Maybe I could see the next day or do I go to urgent care? Because I, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. And I felt like something terrible was happening. Like this is bad. Like, am I having a heart attack? Is there something going on? And so it's something I would never do because I never want to go to the the hospital to the emergency. I went to the emergency room. And it was, it was kind of hard to drive. I, why was I stupid? I should have just taken Uber or something, but I was able to, to make it there and uh, went inside and they, they tested me and uh, they gave me the anti-nausea medication. I started feeling better right away. Maybe that was a placebo because I started feeling better within seconds of them putting it in. So probably was my mind that did it. Um, but then they, they, they looked at everything, did ultrasound, did the CAT scan, and they said that I had a kidney stone. And boy, oh boy, that was pretty powerfully painful. And, it, and all this time, my health has never been better. I've been working out five to six days a week, eating clean, avoiding breads and rices and noodles and eating. If I, I, I love hamburgers, but I'll eat lettuce wrapped hamburgers and I, eat, I don't eat French fries anymore. I eat sweet potato fries and proteins and healthy fats. You know, I have a spoonful of ghee in the morning and... Uh, I tried it intermittent fast and I felt my body has been feeling great, never better. And then I had this kidney stone and I've talked about this on previous podcasts. You can check out the, the one on emotions, but oftentimes 
In fact, 90% of the time, whatever sickness that you might have, you can trace it to something going on in your life, in your mind, some, some issue that you're having. And there's some incredible books, The Secret Language of the Body by Inga Gersal, and of course, Lewis Hayes, Heal Your Body, really go into this concept, this idea that there's a metaphysical connection to your body, that we hold like anger in our livers and fear in our kidneys and also some anger in our kidneys. And so I started looking into this and, and, you know, when you have fear that you push away, if you're keeping it in your body, it has to go somewhere because energy just doesn't die. So it'll accumulate in parts of your body that are particularly able to handle those emotional fluids that are going through your body. And so I know for sure because of, I, I've started several businesses and had things with my business and, and this book I'm writing that I've had fears and I've tried to push those, those away. I have fear every time I do this podcast. And so I'm, I have ways of dealing with my fear. I'm very tuned in. But maybe I wasn't releasing my fear, but just pushing it down inside. And I didn't feel the fear. And it turned into a little stone right there in my kidney when it came out. So it's, and it's, I've been working on this particular podcast beforehand. And it was almost like it was meant to happen because it gives me that view that I can share with you. That if you're going through something right now, try to look at what's going on. You know, those books talk about dementia and it may be that you, you're just letting go from life. It may be that something that's going on with you and, you and I look back at my parents and the health struggles that they had. My mother died of colon cancer. My dad died of Lewy body syndrome, which is similar to Parkinson's disease, but in a dementia type form without the shaking as much. And I know that, that my dad had kind of given up. And, and so those symptoms, maybe you are prone to these different things in your body, but it's your mindset. And if we come to a realization where it's true, we understand that we can control our bodies. And we will start to become more tuned into what emotions we're experiencing, what things are going through our minds, and the way that we deal with emotional problems will be more important for us. But we're starting to understand the way the body works. And it's much more complicated and wonderful and fascinating. The way that DNA works is so much more beyond anything that you can imagine. And we're going to talk about that in this podcast. But what you think is good health is not what you truly think. Remember, you're creating every cell of your body and it's being replaced on a constant basis. Are you, repla are, are you creating these cells in a field of worry and concern and anger or sadness? Are you creating them in a field of love? Because if you create the cells in your body, if you're happy and loving and peaceful, the cells that you create, the water that you drink and the food that you eat will all be affected by this. You are, you are sending out vibrations to your environment right now that literally uh, are changing the very material and their entire makeup. And you're doing that with the food that you eat. You're sending, you're also creating the food that you eat with your mind. So everything that you're interacting with in the world, you're creating. And this is very powerful to think about. We are going through a revolution, the health revolution. We are going to have to reframe our understanding of our own biology in more miraculous terms. That's what's going to happen. We are only beginning to understand the vast, untapped human potential at our disposal. Or we have this extraordinary capacity to influence the world. You know, I remember when I was a kid and I was riding my bike by myself in some hills. I, I, I lived in, uh, in Cheyenne, Wyoming and lived nearby where I could just kind of just drive out in the hills all by myself. And about six month, months before I had, I had gone off my bike and I'd hit the front brake and, and, and just flint, went forward and I crashed and hit my head and had a concussion. And then pr prior to that, I had uh, been playing basketball and I'd had a uh, I had twisted my ankle and broken it. And I had to, you know, uh, when I jumped up, I landed on the side of my ankle. And so I was riding my bike again and felt about feeling confident going down this super steep hill and hit some rocks and landed and twisted my ankle. And then, then I was able to just barely glance my head. And what I had experienced before in experiencing this concussion, and, and I knew that I probably had broken my ankle again. But I had known the contrast of the, the, my ankle being healthy and the ankle being broken. And so I remember, and I was what, 15, 14 years old. I remember just thinking about, okay, I've just been through this. 
and I'd just been through, did I have a concussion? Did I hit my head? But I, I, I had adjusted myself. And so then I, I got up and got on my bike and started pedaling as, and, and acting as if I was just entirely fine. And that childlike innocence that I had, I got home. It was sore and tender, but two days later I was fine. I didn't break my ankle. And I've always wondered, did I heal myself in that moment? And there are people out here listening to the podcast that have similar stories. You've had something that's happened to you And you know that there was an instant healing in your body. And when those things happen, I want you to remember and go back and focus on those because you can recreate that feeling. You know, the first, when we talk about on this podcast, traveling through parallel realities and the idea of quantum physics, the idea that we believe on this podcast is that we can literally quantum jump into an entirely different body. There's a healthy version of you in the multiverse somewhere. And imagine you can simply shift into that version of you that's healthy. And you go to the doctor and there's suddenly, you're healed. Why are people suddenly healing? Is it the body that's healing? Or did you literally go to another version of yourself that's healthy? Imagine if we figure out through the science of quantum physics, how to move our consciousness to different universes. If we understand that that's what we're doing every second on a regular basis, we're constantly shifting in and out of different universes all the time. There's universes where we are healthy where we do not have a broken ankle, where we do not have cancer, where we're not sick. Can can I jump into that other universe? And of course, while I was sick with my kidney stone, I'm not thinking about quantum jumping. But maybe we can hack this and figure out a way to do this. I believe, and that's what I'm sharing with my podcast and my book that I have coming out, The Reality Revolution, is this idea that we can quantum jump. That quantum jumping is a real thing. That we're constantly surfing through different realities on a regular basis. And so start looking at examples of that and you can see proof of it. Your first quantum jump that you remember that was a true quantum jump where you shifted your reality, I promise you, was when you had hurt yourself sometime when you were a child and your mom said, let me kiss it better. Maybe you skinned your knee or bumped into the wall. Maybe it was a bruise or something and your mom gave you that kiss and you instantly felt better. That was the first quantum jump that you ever experienced. So I'm saying there's a reality revolution in understanding how our reality works. And the reality revolution will be instantaneous healing. All for everyone. Imagine that. A future where we can live forever with an understanding that we can quantum jump. Now that sounds completely insane. But mark my words, we're working with technologies as well because these universes where we are able to live that, we're moving towards them. If we focus on them as a group, as a society, we can shift our reality to something that's better and more incredible. Every time we heal, we're shedding our skin and becoming somebody completely different, somebody brand new. Healing is becoming somebody different. The idea of moving to a different identity when we quantum jump is the same idea as healing because if you are the person that you are now that's not healthy, then how can you heal? You need to become a different person. You need to travel to a different reality and jump into that healthy body. Dr. Joe Dispenda is talking about this in his incredible in his incredible books that he's written. I totally recommend it. Look at the movie The Secret. And they talk about two people that literally, there's somebody that crashed in a plane, there's a woman that has cancer, and they could literally not walk or move, and we're told that they could be paralyzed, and the woman is told that she's, she has cancer. And the the woman simply just watched comedies and laughed. And then they went back and she didn't think about it. She went back and she was healthy and and healed by, by creating a positive state. So we at the reality revolution believe that there, that if we meditate through a period of meditation, we can reach what we, I believe is our bliss body by focusing back on the perfect states of health and creating an emotional signature for those. We can manifest a body that is in perfect bliss, that can change the way we think about our body. And it's a, it's a course that we offer called the Bliss Body Course. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, and the idea is that you can reach your bliss body. And I'm going to go work through some of our discoveries in this, and it's constantly evolving. But it's an interesting assertion is that if you can, in a meditative state, imagine and, and come and sync up with a bliss body, the one that's the perfect arrangement of health for your future, Maybe we can jump into that perfect health. So the health revolution now really is a part of the reality revolution. It's changing science in the way we look at health. It really is. We may have the power as communities 
to improve the quality of our air and water, our crime and accident statistics, the educational levels of our children. One well-directed thought may be a gentle but effective way for us, for men and women right now, take matters of global interest as their own. Instead of watching the news and getting sad about the craziness that's happening on the news, let's project out a solution to these problems. Right now, one of the most fascinating things, as I said before, was Dr. Joe Dispenza's research. His advanced studies have gotten to a place where he's doing research while people are meditating and doing EEG and heart feedback, looking at heart coherence, doing all kinds of very complicated uh, advanced statistical models. And they're finding rapid and, and accumulated transformations in people that are changing the way that they think in short and very fast and quick periods of time. It is a revolution and it's wonderful. Now, if you have no specific goal and do not desire anything particular, you have it like this weak life force. And the idea if you can find your purpose or you can find your goal, sometimes I believe that changes and transforms our health. So we must find a way to increase our vitality, to increase the way that we feel and feel better and understand the way our emotions work and understand the way that we store emotions in our body and understand that we need to release these emotions when we're in a state of sickness and health, the heart is not capable of wanting anything because the heart is, is worried about our own survival. We must be in a state of good health to create the reality that we want. And we must have faith and an understanding that we have control over our reality. Yes, we may all die someday, but maybe that'll be a point where we do it by our own choice. Biologists are honing their tools right now for deleting, replacing, and editing DNA in a strategy called CRISPR that has become one of the most popular ways to do genome engineering. Utilizing a modified bacterial protein and an RNA that guides it to a specific DNA sequence, the CRISPR system provides unprecedented control over genes in many species, including perhaps humans. This control has allowed many types of experiments to practice, for instance, reality transurfing effectively. Vadim Zeeland says, effectively, you have to be in good state of health and have a relatively powerful energy field. You may think that your health is quite, is quite good as it is, but may not really know what true health feels like. Maybe whatever state you're in is what you're just used to it. If you struggle to get out of bed in the morning and do not want to go to work or university, if you feel sluggish after lunch and find yourself nodding off, and in the evening wish for nothing better than to plonk yourself down in front of the television, you cannot say that you're in good health, according to Vadim Zealand. If this describes your lifestyle, your energy levels are clearly only sufficient to support a measured existence. You will already have additional energy by reclaiming your vitality being spent on excess potentials and pendulums when you do the realities transurfing. But you can never have too much energy. So listen to my podcast on energy. And we're constantly discussing it. And I'm coming out with the, a new routine, the energy routine. Um, but the thing is, understand the importance of your health. There are people out there that have given up hope. That they, they've given up hope. They, they don't think that it's worth living to a longer future. But it is. Because right now, if we survive long enough to the singularity, we can live forever. And the goal is to live long enough to live forever. You've heard of Ray Kurzweil, and he has a fantastic book, The Fantastic Joy Voyage. And as he says, the 21st century is worth living to experience. Most of our conceptions of life itself will be turned on the head in the coming century. Not the least of these is the expectation that we all must experience death and taxes belief in the inevitability of death and how this perspective will soon change is very much a part of this new reality revolution jason silva on a recent one of his episodes discussed the possibility of being immortal maybe we could die in a car accident but maybe we'll find a way to revolutionize our bodies with new technologies like nanotechnology many experts believe within the decade we'll be adding more than a year to a human life expectancy every year at this point with each passing year, your remaining life expectancy will move further into the future. Aubrey de Grey believes we will successfully stop aging in mice who share 99% of our gen genetic code within 10 years, and that human therapies to halt and reverse aging will follow 5 to 10 years after that. It is my intention to live long enough 
to live forever. And I believe that you can do it too. Many of us can do it. Now, I don't know if I can do it. Obviously, I'm oblivious to some of the hidden degenerative process in my body. So I'm going to work this through with the podcast and we're going to discuss this. My goal is just not not to die too young because if we if the past is not a reliable guide to the future, we, we can't look back to the past and what we think is happening in the health industry to determine the future. The 20th century, imagine the 20th century was, was not 100 years of progress today, but the equivalent of 10 to 20 years now. Imagine the entire 100 years of the 20th century. Soon, 20 years will be going by every year. From what we experienced when we were kids, what, what seems like a year is 20 years of technological advancement. Our progression will be expanding and compounding. Like I said, te- nanotechnology will enable us to rebuild and extend our bodies and minds, creating any product from mere information, resulting in massive gains in prosperity for everyone. A revolution. We will develop means to massively expand our physical and mental capabilities by integrating and interfacing our biological systems with new technologies. This might be controversial, but it is true. Look at what we talked about with the CRISPR revolution. They're being able to rewrite genes. By the end of 2014, some 1,000 research papers have been published that mention CRISPR. The technology had been used to functionally inactivate genes in human cell lines and cells to study candida albicans, to modify yeasts, to make biofuels, genetically modify crop strains, and they're beginning to use it to change mosquitoes so they can't transmit diseases, and they finally are starting to use it on human beings. CRISPR-based reevaluations of claims for gene-disease relationships have led to the discovery of potential important anomalies. Biologists continue to hone their tools for deleting, replacing, or otherwise editing DNA, and a strategy called CRISPR has become one of the most popular ways to do genome engineering, utilizing a modified bacterial protein and an RNA, just like that. But beyond that, just our own bodies, we may be able to upload our consciousness into the web, and the possibilities are endless. And if it sounds like science fiction, that's because it still is. But the technology is still being looked at. For There's a company called Humai, whose business plan currently up and running. Josh Bosenegger, who says his team will resurrect the first human within 30 years. So how do you go about transferring consciousness to another robot body? Humai explains on their website, We're using artificial intelligence and nanotechnology to store data of controversial styles, behavioral patterns, conversational styles, thought processes, and information about how your body functions from the inside out. This data will be coded onto multiple sensor technologies, which will be built onto artificial body with brain of a deceased human. Using cloning technology, we will restore the brain as it rematures. Basically, that means very much like the singularity this company will just want to will, will be able to transfer your consciousness to another brain. Maybe it won't happen, but when the f- technology is fully developed, according to Bosonegra, they will be able to implant the brain into an artificial body. The artificial body functions will be controlled by your thoughts by measuring brain waves. As the brain ages, they'll use technology to repair and pr- improve cells. So we may be able to, 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 so if you can live long enough, we may be able to live forever if you want to do that. But what I talked about in the beginning, this idea of quantum jumps is what's fascinating to me because maybe you're jumping into a body that's already healed. Medical journals have long cataloged isolated cases of individuals who have miraculous recoveries or spontaneous remissions from serious and life-threatening illnesses. Of course, read Dr. Joe Dispenza's books. There are cases of spontaneous remission from adult T-cell leukemia and Tezeko et al. in 2000 or Murakawa in 1990. There's cases documented of lung cancer, just spontaneously remission, completely gone in one day. By Herc Birds and Kopoff in 1997, there's been cases of liver cancer that have completely reversed by Terasaki in 2000 and many others. When these cases are presented, they are always seen as abnormal occurrence as an example of an individual who has beaten the odds. In conventional medicine, we don't think of these cases as a reproducible phenomenon as something we can actually make or encourage it to happen. Have you heard of Mark Chenoweth, who spent 10 years in a wheelchair and was born with spina bifida? 
crippling disease. He was unable to walk. And in 1998, he consulted a doctor about taking scuba diving lessons. Of course, the doctor immediately forbade it. And against the doctor's orders, he went to on vacation in Menorca and persuaded some diving center to give him scuba diving lessons. Once diving to the depth of 55 feet after he surfaced, he found himself able to walk again. Three days later, his legs lost sensation. So he immediately went back to the scuba diving. And after a while, he noticed the deeper he got, the longer he could walk. Perhaps with the use of float tanks, as I discussed earlier, or different technologies we, that we don't even know about. People will be able to walk that can't walk now. But the thing to understand about this reality revolution is the idea that we store our personality in our body. Our genes getting switched on and on, off while in the womb because of the emotions of the mother. And so our mother and our mother's personality is literally transferred into our bodies by the food that she ate and the cells that we have implanted as epigenetic shows. And then there's William Sheridan of New York who was recovering from a heart transplant when he inexplicably developed a passion for art and started making beautiful sketches. The 63 year old found out later that his organ donor was an artist. This odd phenomenon called cellular memory is the theory that the brain is only part of the body that contains memory and human traits and the other organs such as the heart and the hand can contain them too. Several studies have focused on research that, of this phenomenon. One recommend, I recommend is Dr. Paul Pizal's study entitled Changes in Heart Transplant Recipients that Parallel the Personalities of Their Donor. It's fascinating. And perhaps those cells are existing in another universe at the same time, carrying that cellular memory that's living now. It's truly, this reality revolution is changing the way we look at medicine. For instance, there's been a resurgence in integrative medicine, which is based on the belief in the body's self-healing capacity. We must embrace this. In integrative medicine, the physician's role is seen as a partnership with the purpose that promoting the self-healing capacity. There are studies of healers such as John of God in Brazil who appears to be a channel for long dead healers of the past and in some cases has been able to produce miraculous healings. While this is interesting, it may be more interesting to learn that we can do for ourselves to promote healing. What can we do? When you go to the doctor and you have rash on your arm or something like that and they say, oh, that's a terrible rash. I'll give you this cream and it'll go away from it. And they're not looking at the, the, the cause of it. It's the symptom that they're looking at. We look at the symptom, not the cause. You play an active role in your own health and your doctor is only going to try to make it better, but he's not going to look at the deep cause related causes. That's your role. Spontaneous remissions have been explained by conventional medicine as coincidence or misdiagnosis and possibly involving the immune system. And while all those explanations may have a kernel of truth, recent information on genomics have shown the therapies used in integrated medicine, such as diet, exercise, meditation, stress management, and exercise all have potential to act, actually turn or turn off the genes for chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, according to an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal in 2009, which states, the latest scientific studies have shown that our bodies have a remarkable capacity to begin healing and much more quickly than we had once realized if we addressed lifestyle factors that often cause these chronic diseases. These studies show the integrated medicine can be, make a more powerful difference in our health and well-being, how quickly these changes may occur and how dynamic these mechanisms can be. Beyond the belief that in the body's self-healing capacity, integrated medicine promotes healthy lifestyle and stresses the importance of the mind-body connection. In describing the miracles that, I, that, that I've had just earlier when I was riding my bike and, and, and things like that, and we all can remember there have been we've had known people or have had miracles in our own minds. And a lot of times when you read about this related to imagery, vision, visualization, relaxation, laughter, or spiritual connections, there's not going to be one answer that's guaranteed a, a miracle. But the, the idea is that everyone can heal. However, whether the feeling be a cure for their illness or emotional or spiritual healing, through the dying process, but they are all miraculous. You know, there's a movie in 1997, the movie Gattaca, 
where it's in the future where there's a giant database of genetic material and they can identify all the diseases so you can be born with no diseases. And there are faith babies that are born that, that are naturally, that are less than perfect and they're discriminated against. And if this happened in our future, and maybe we're starting to look at this kind of thing happening, you know, um, maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe the sicknesses that we are experiencing are a part of our spiritual evolution as we understand our control of our reality. Maybe, maybe that's the reason that our higher selves are putting us through these different things because we're getting in touch as we are learning to drive the car. Our spirits are learning through these sicknesses. They have spiritual lessons that we learn. And maybe someday with 23 and me, they're going to figure out a way to look at these databases. And they're going to start doing that. But the truth is we will lose our natural ability. And imperfections initiate growth and change. Randomness is a part of the plan. You can't control everything. But you can heal. And these experiences where we can heal our bodies are based on choices that we make about activities that we do and our thoughts and our emotions. And I've helped people in different cases and an offshoot of improving their emotions or the way their mind works is that their health improves. And it's a wonderful thing to see. You don't have to have superior genes. DNA does not transform consciousness. Consciousness transforms DNA. Thoughts are language of the brain. Understand how it works. But feelings are the language of the body. And the body is speaking to us. It's speaking a language. And sometimes we have to listen to these feelings. And what I believe is, we don't necessarily have the same nerve receptors inside our body. So we may not feel as, as much as we when we digest food or in the colon. But we have powerful senses before we eat something. And we, we, we need to start understanding the power of this so understand what's happening in the association of the mind to the body so you have a present state of being imagine every time you have a thought in addition to making neurotransmitters your brain also makes another chemical a small protein called a neuropeptide and that sends a message to your body and your body then reacts when it gets the neuropeptide it reacts by creating a feeling and so the brain starts to notice the feeling that the body is having so then the brain creates a thought with language to that feeling and then the me- and then the message that allow you to think you were just what you were just thinking so thinking creates the feeling and then feeling creates the thinking that's equal to those feeling and it becomes a loop and so understand the feeling thinking loop and it's one of those things that we have to break Again, the brain acts on the body's feelings by generating the same thoughts that will produce the same emotions. So the spiritual path or the path of transurfing this reality is understanding how to control our own emotions and break this loop. It becomes clear that redundant thoughts hardwire your brain into a fixed pattern of neurocircuitry. Because feelings are the modus operandi of the body. And the emotions you continually feel based on your automatic thinking will condition the body to memorize those emotions that are equal to the unconscious, hardwired mind and brain. And this means the conscious mind isn't really in charge. The body subconsciously been programmed and conditioned in a very real way to become its own mind as the case of the person who got the new heart. So then this loop of thinking and feeling and then feeling and thinking keeps on going and then our bodies memorize these emotions. And our brains have signals our body to feel. And the cycle becomes so established and ingrained, it creates a a, a, a familiar feeling based on this old information that you keep on bringing in. And it becomes so established and it just, just, it strengthens and moves into your body and it becomes a part of your personality. And as long as this continues, you're just reliving in the past. It's hard for us it's hard to break this pattern the neurons are firing the same way they're triggering the release the same chemical transmitters and neuropeptides in the brain and body and these same chemicals begin to train the body to further remember the emotions and it just goes on and on and now the body starts to train the mind if you go back to my podcast on emotions 
I talk about the terrible epidemic that we're experiencing in our society of trapped emotions. As I mentioned earlier, if you're angry, you may be having trapped emotions in your liver. It may not be the alcohol, but the anger that comes with the alcohol that creates the liver problem for people to drink. Or your kidneys, or your colon, when, when you feel like you've lost hope or control of the world. The colon can be an, become inflamed. There's literally an explanation for every process. Look at the emotion code. Look at the, the book, Secret Language of the Body. It's pretty incredible what happens. So we have to figure out a way of releasing these emotions. I believe we can release them through our intention. And in the book, The Emotion Code, he talks about using magnets and releasing and letting the emotions come up. Sometimes they're uncomfortable, but the, the only way to release them is let them come up. And so we let emotions come up when we're happy or excited, but we don't let them come up when they're uncomfortable. And so experiencing the emotions is a, a point of release. But what's happening is we're, we're addicted to our bodies. We, we are addicted to these feelings that we get. And it's the unconscious habituations and emotional memories that are driving us. And 95% of who you are by age 40 is just memorized behaviors, skills, emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes that function like an automatic computer program. And what if that program is flawed? So 95% of who you are is outside of your control and it's an unconscious script. And that means when, when your mind's 5% is working against the 95% of what you memorized, it's hard. So let's, let's bridge the gap and figure out a way to change that. You can think positively all you want, but the 5% of your mind that's conscious will feel as if they're swimming upstream. Your body acts as your unconscious mind. It didn't know the difference between the actual event. So when you have something that happens and that you worry about, Understanding our previous description, when you have those neuropeptides, you have an event that happens, and then you're, 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 when you relive it, when you think about it, when you talk about it with your friends, your body doesn't know the difference. Remember, your body is, take the, your eyes out of it. Your body is just your feelings. So if it's feeling it again, it's feeling as if it's happening again. And when you look in nature, uh, when an animal is being chased and the fight or flight response happens and the fear response happens in your body and the cortisol is released, then afterwards when they're safe, their, their bodies immediately go back to the zero point and they're healthy. But because of our advanced, advanced level of consciousness with the memories that we carry and staying away from being in the moment, when we remember these, our body doesn't know the difference. So you're constantly, when you have a bad event and you remember it over and over again, you fire and wire the circuits repeatedly in the brain. And, you, and these traumas get ingrained into your body unless you understand what's going on. And they become a part of you. And it becomes this incredible thing that can make you sick and can change anything for you. So you have to change your state of thinking and being. You have, you have to change the way that you think. And how do we do that? That's the goal of this podcast is to give you different ways of changing your thinking. But clearly it's from conditioning, expectation, and meaning. Imagine like you're an animal trainer and you, you have to you condition your body into a subconscious state of being or your mind and body are one. Your thoughts and feelings have merged. And whenever you have a stimulus, like an opportunity that you that you might have scared yourself or some based on some past experience. Maybe we can break those responses. Maybe you haven't done the things that you want because of some memorized fear response that you have beyond just your own health. So that is what we're talking about. So that you know, two key studies by researchers at the Benson Henry Institute for Mind Body Medicine at Massachusetts General in Boston looked at the effect of meditation which is known for eliciting peaceful and even blissful states on gene expression. And in the first study, 20 volunteers received eight weeks of trainings in various mind-body practices known to induce relaxation response. The researchers also fo followed 19 long-term daily practitioners of the same techniques. At the end of the study period, 
The novices showed a change in 1,561 genes, as well as reduced blood pressure, reduced heart and respiration rates, while the experienced practitioners expressed 2,209 new genes. Most of the genetic changes involved improving the body's response to chronic psychological stress. The second study, conducted in 2013, found that eliciting the relaxation response produces changes in gene expression after just one session of meditation among both novices and experienced practitioners alike. Genes that were upregulated included those involved in immune function, energy metabolism, insulin secretion, while genes that were downregulated including links to inflammation and stress. Studies like these underscore how quickly it's possible to change your own genes. And that's why the placebo response can produce physical changes in a matter of moments. Indeed, our health, including how long we live, is affected by how optimistic we are. According to a Mayo Clinic study in 2002, following 447 people for more than 30 years, showing optimists were healthier physically and mentally. According to a study by Maruta Colligan and Malincock, optimism and pessimism assessed in the 60s and self-reported health status 30 years later. A 30-year study. Optimist literally means best suggesting that those people focus on the attention on the best future scenario. Specifically, the optimists had fewer problems with daily activities as a result of their physical health or their emotional state, experienced less pain, felt more energetic, had an easier time with social activities, and felt happier, calmer, and more peaceful most of the time. This came right on the heels of another Mayo Clinic study that followed more than 800 people for 30 years, showing that optimists live longer than pessimists. Researchers at Yale followed 660 people aged 50 and older for 23 years, discovering that those with a positive attitude about aging lived more than seven years longer than those who had a more negative outlook about growing older. According to, to the longevity study, conscientiousness is part of the key for people that live very long lives, people that care about their lives, which I believe is separate from positivity. Conscientiousness is a looking towards the future and what we're doing by exploring the quantum possibility of having access to parallel realities. We are conscientious of our attention because our attention can pull us into these realities. Attitude had more of an influence on longevity than blood pressure, cholesterol levels, smoking, body weight, or level of exercise. Additional studies have looked more specifically at heart health and attitude. Around the same time, a Duke University study of 866 heart patients reported that those who felt routinely more positive emotions had a 20% greater chance of being alive 11 years later than those who habitually experienced more negative emotions. Even more striking are the results of a study of 255 medical students at the Medical College of Georgia who were followed for 25 years. Those who were the most hostile had five times greater incidence of coronary heart disease. And then there's a John Hopkins study presented at the AMA's 2001 scientific sessions showed that a positive outlook may offer the strongest known protection against heart disease in adults at risk due to family history. So if you have a family history of heart illnesses and if you have a positive outlook, you can overcome that. This study suggests that having the right attitude can work well as better than eating the proper diet, getting the right amount of exercise, or maintaining the ideal body weight. You go work out every day for an hour. You eat the right foods, but where is your mind at? According to the National Cancer Institute, a condition called anticipatory nausea occurs in about 29% of of patients receiving chemotherapy. When they're exposed to the smells and sights, they suddenly get sick before they've had their treatment. That's happening 29% of the time. Our bodies are incredible. 11% feel so sick before their treatments, they actually vomit. Some cancer patients start feeling nauseated in the car on the way to get the chemo. Because in their body, they've experienced it already in some universe. And our bodies know what's going to make us sick. And so we become sick. And so maybe sometimes that particular response is happening too. The researchers' data reported that 40% of chemo patients who thought they would get sick because their doctors told them they were probably would be sick after the treatment went on to develop nausea before the treatment was even administered. Additionally, 13% who said they were unsure of what to expect also got sick. 
How can it be? Some people become so convinced that they will get sick from chemotherapy drugs, they, they get ill. If that's true, 40% of chemo patients could also be true that 40% of the folks could just easily get well by simply changing their thoughts about what to expect about their health from that day. In one study, a group of researchers at the University of British Columbia informed a group of Parkinson's patients they were going to receive a drug that would significantly improve their symptoms. And guess what? It worked. As somebody who has a, a father and a grandmother who both had Parkinson's, and my dad's mother and father had it, I, I'm always worried about that. But I'm not going to worry about it as if it's going to happen. In fact, I believe that if I have the right attitude, I can overcome this. And more research is happening, I can survive past it. In reality, the patients received placebo, nothing more than a saline injection. Even so, half of them, which had no drug intervention, in fact, had much better motor control after receiving the injection. The researchers then scanned the patients' brains to get a better idea of what had happened and found that the people who responded positively to the placebo were actually manufacturing dopamine in their brains as much as 200% more than before. Our minds are a natural pharmaceutical that know exactly what you want if they can believe in the mind that it's real. To get an equivalent effect with a drug, you'd have to administer roughly a full dose of amphetamine, a mood elevating drug that increases dop dopamine. It seemed merely expecting to get better unleashed some previously untapped power within the Parkinson's patients that triggered the production of the dopamine, exactly what their bodies needed to get better. And if this is true, what is the process by which a thought alone can manufacture dopamine in the brain? Can we find that out? Maybe we're going to figure that out. Maybe by studying our consciousness, we can study the production of things like dopamine in our brain. Might such a certain internal state brought on by a combination of clear intention and heightened emotional state make us invincible in certain situations by activating our own storehouse of pharmaceuticals and overriding the genetic circumstances of disease we once considered outside our conscious control? So maintain a frequency of the bliss body. What is the perfect body that you could be healthy? What's the healthiest state that you've ever had? And maintain that frequency. Find it. I believe that you can do it if you focus on it. Re-energize that reality and slow down your own aging momentum. Thoughts about aging such as growing ill, senile, energyless are only limiting beliefs. There are plenty of examples of aged leading fully productive and joyous lives. Look at Clint Eastwood who just came out with another movie. I think he started directing when he was 70 or 72 or Tina Turner whose career took off when she was 60. You can just sit down. If you don't have goals or a vision, there's been so many authors that have survived long past certain sicknesses because they had projects they wanted to finish. And that's the power, the magical power of the great magical power of finding your purpose. I believe the number one thing we can do to make ourselves healthier is to learn the power of releasing. Of releasing things that discourage us. I believe that we can cease talking about being sick. That sometimes we talk ourselves into it, but if we talk about it all the time. So we can do that. We can take ourselves. I believe that we can dissolve pain with the mind, body, and, and spirit. And learning how to understand our pain. Most pains begin as a purely a mental, emotional creation before they manifest physically. And early stages of pain, phantom pains, can therefore be dissolved with the mind and spirit. I believe it can happen. I've been able to do it with toothaches. I had my jaw rewired once and they had to break the top and bottom parts of my jaw and then pulling bone from my hip, they pulled my teeth forward and wired my jaw shut. And when I woke up, my face was so swollen, you couldn't see my neck. And it was, it was very painful and they uh, were gonna give me some heavy drugs and I'm really against because I believe I don't wanna get pulled into that pain medication. And I only took one pain medication the day of. And after that, I, I remember slowly being able to dissolve the pain by changing my focus and my breathing. We're going to have a podcast coming soon, I'm excited about, where we're going to try to break down the deep dive on breathing. Because I do think that breathing itself is another great solution. And as you understand your breath, understand any of us on this planet can stop breathing at any time and they can kill themselves that way. You don't see anybody out there that says committed suicide by holding breath. 
But that's what it is. And trust me, I've sat with people that are dying. And it is all about your breath. And I believe the breath can, can heal pain. It can expand our energy and, our, and through our breath, I believe that we pull in the very source. And as we understand our intricate link to the divine source that we know of with our breath, we will start using our breath. I mean, when, when a woman is pregnant and they learn how breathing techniques to take away the pain. And I believe that that, that is one incredible way to do that. We can inver, inver, I had the flu once. I remember starting to get sick and I started getting that scratch in your throat and started getting um, the, my nose started to run a little bit. And I, I knew those feelings and then I was in a, and I was like, I'm in another universe, I'm in another body and I'm, I'm healthy. And I remember later in the day, just thinking I had, I was getting sick earlier and I was completely fine. You might have had something like that too. And you didn't know it, um, that you had that thought and it, and it goes away. And maybe we next time you have an instant healing like this, I want you to write everything that you can down about it. Capture the feeling of it and the emotion of it. If it became unconsciously, how did it come consciously? Because you need to tap into the healthy, to the healthy power of your bliss body, the body that is truly blissful and healing it of all things. That is pure energy. Rewire your mind. Use affirmations. I do believe strongly. Find love for your body. Go through each of the parts of your body and say, I love my colon. I love my liver. I love my heart. Give it love with your voice. Understand that you can do that. Give love to the food that you eat. Bring love into your body with the water that you drink. Give love to it. Send love into yourself and find love for your body. Don't just take it for granted. Because it's wonderful. This body we were given for free it does so many incredible things. And you can find love for that. Understand that we need to look at our digestion. It's efficient, but it's prone to long-term disease. So you have to look at your digestion and that is by looking at the, the power of the words and thoughts that you have to affect your environment. So what you're, bre what you're eating is what you're becoming and what you're eating is what you're thinking. Because we know from Dr. Masoto's research about water that water is literally changed by our very thoughts and emotions. And there's so much water in food and our body is made up of water that you're constantly creating through the food that you eat. So consciously eat your food, trapping positive, powerful emotions in your food as if the, every single bite of whatever you eat is magic and become conscious of it and release those trapped emotions. There's so many things that you could be having right now. When you go and read Dr. Um, Louise Hayes, Heal Your Body, and it has a list of different symptoms. Anxiety is not trusting the flow and process of life. Appendicitis is the fear of life blocking the flow of good. She has different affirmations that you can use for each body part. And I don't want to just, just start reading through her book because it's wonderful and I want you to be exposed to it. Dr. Nelson Bradley stated in his book, The Emotion Code, every cancer patient I treated was found to have trapped emotions embedded in malignant tissues. And... Just to talk a little bit more about these embedded emotions, as we talked about, you may not believe that this is happening. You still might believe that is not a medically rational thing that's happening. So let me explain. Have you heard of the freeze response? If you perceive what you're unable to confront or escape the situation, a secondary protective response called the freeze response is activated in your body. And so what happens, it causes your body to suppress the negative impact of the experience. So in essence, if you feel helpless to change a threatening, painful, or stressful experience, the freeze response will cause your body to bury an intense negative sensation to thoughts and emotions that are arising, keeping them hidden from your conscious view. Where then are the sensations, thoughts, and emotions buried? So out of a matter of survival, sometimes your body will do that. So understand, in nature, animals are not doing that because they don't have to, but we are freezing. Now in nature, we see animals freeze, and that freeze response, like the deer in the headlights effect. But that, that freeze response may be pulling our emotions into our body. And we know that stress, just stress in general, is bad for our own health. By understanding our meditative powers, we can overcome stress. 
The American Institute of Stress declared in Time Magazine that stress-related disorders make up between 80 and 90% of the ailments that bring people to family practice physicians. United Nations has referred to stress as the 20th century disease. And it's the freeze response. We're freezing these emotions into our body. And you have to find a way to release them, to maintain a state of perfect health. According to Vadim Zeland, in order to maintain a good state of health, one has to take care of the physical and subtle bodies. Human energy levels are closely linked to the condition of the body's muscles. Muscle tension hinders the normal flow of invisible currents, which disturbs the transmission of energy throughout the energy field. A person who feels tense can enter a relaxed group of people and change the mood in the group without uttering a single word. The tension seems to hang in the air. The other people in the group absorb the negative energy without necessarily being aware of it. So we must find a way to block these tensions. Tension creates an inhomogeneity in the general field calling up balanced forces as a result. Equilibrium can be reestablished by either bringing the group energy to a common denominator or by quashing energy potential of the opposite sign them to relax. A person can be feeling physically tired but comfortable and cheerful at the same time. A person who is felt well fed and rested can feel down and listless. So you, it's not just that. So if we're looking at this from a tra reality transurfing perspective. Understand that these tensions broadcast outward and also come back inward and we must become aware of it because it's affecting our body. So understand this relates to what we're discovering about DNA. And everybody says, oh, I've got bad genes. It's all my genes. And if you give that as a description, you're not allowed to use that as an excuse anymore. A new science of epigenetics is showing that we turn on and turn off DNA sequences. Epigenetics is defined as the study of changes in organisms brought by modification of gene expression rather than by alteration of the genetic code in the form of DNA. And we're at, we have an epigenetic revolution that's happening right now. And it's literally changing our human lifespan. They're starting to look at the way that DNA works. It's not a single thing. It's like a, a movie script and that you can change the script of the movie. And it's just like what we've been talking about in other episodes about reality transurfing. So consider your body like a movie. So just understand that you're constantly replacing the cells in your body and you may have an entirely new body. They say every seven years, I've heard other references that every cell you replace is, is, uh, can be even faster than that. Some cells like the colon can be replaced every four years. Skin cells live about two or three weeks. Colons die off after four days. Sperm cells live, have a lifespan of about three days. Brain cells typically last an entire lifetime. So that according to research, the brain cells always stay. So while you're replacing all of those other cells in your body, those thoughts on your side of your brain always stay. And that is what's killing us, is those neurons in our brain that we're in, in, impacting with these looped feelings that are happening, pulling us into realities of sickness and unhealth. And we can do differently. People just don't understand how DNA affects their health. Just understand DNA contains raw information or instructions that make us who and what we are. Our DNA uses the instructions imprinted within its individual sequences to produce proteins. Okay? And that's all that's happening. And so you can turn the switch on or off on the, on the expression of these proteins. Our bodies are in fact protein producing machines. Muscle cells make, uh, make myosin and skin cells make collagen all through the DNA. So as we're studying this, we're starting to understand that DNA isn't what we think it is. In fact, listen to this and this is going to blow your mind. DNA we're learning is not the key to your health. It was Dr. Peter Garyev discovered, gave us a powerful evidence, the source field, maybe while operating through our DNA. He discovered that complete genetic codes for an organism might not actually be found in the DNA molecule. He put a sample of DNA in a small quartz container and then zapped it with a laser and then observed it with super sensitive equipment that could de detect single photons of light. And he found the DNA acted like a light sponge. Somehow the DNA molecule observed all, it, it, it observed all the photons of light in the arc and actually stored them in a corkscrew shaped spiral. That's the shape of DNA. So think about that for a second. There's nothing we know of that can bend light except for a black hole. So DNA apparently created a vortex, a black hole of some sort 
and then pulled the light in that was zapped into the cube. And here's the most fascinating part of it, is that when they removed the DNA, the light stayed there for 30 days. An imprint of DNA stayed there. You leave a light pattern of DNA everywhere we go. So while you're sitting there, when you walk away, the light pattern of all the DNA in your body is left as an imprint in the chair or bed that you're laying in right now. And that someday we'll be able to have a sensor that will show the light field of DNA that you left as as we become better and better with our scientific instruments for investigations. This is a real thing that we'll be able to do. The only rational scientific explanation, there has to be an energy field that is paired up with the DNA molecule as if the DNA has an energetic duplicate It does not need the DNA molecule to be there in order for it to keep on doing its job, storing the visible life. Some force, perhaps akin to gravity, is holding the photons in place. Understand also that we have found that humans are bioluminescent. In Japan, researchers have found that the human body glimmers and that light fluctuates through the day in cycles, leaving us brightest in the afternoon and dimmest in the evening. What is this light? Is this not the source energy field, the alternate space that we're interacting with? So understand, I believe we need to learn how to relax. We need to learn how to be still. We need to learn how to boost our energy. We we must find a way to, to create a sense of happiness. We can do that through stillness and relaxation. We can improve our confidence and our connections to ourselves. There are specific meditations, and I'll try to create some here in future podcasts just for your health. But according to Lynn McTaggart, she has uh, in her study of intention, you want to have certain intentions. I have always been healthy. You want to stay stuff in the present tense. Okay. In the present tense. So you say, my lower back and sacrum are free of all pain and now move easily and fluidly. You say it. it, Those are the ones that are most effective that actually have worked. You say, I will be free of side effects. And she does say in her book on intention that the more specific your intention, whom, what, when, where, and why, the more specific the healing that you want, the more powerful the intentions are. It actually wants the specificity. And that's that's what she is teaching in the book is that you use these specific visualizations, the more specific that you can. And by creating these meditations, also to remember the feel of being pain-free and healthy. And start marking right now. If you're feeling healthy right now, find a way to remember this feeling so that you can go back to this feeling at some point when you're sick in the future and you may be able to shift into the feeling that you have now. So remember that feeling. Another thing that I found is very effective is fasting. Fasting does work. It helps clean the body. The body, give, give it a chance to move away from the digestive process. If you read about Jack Dorsey, he, he literally fasts. Um, he's the CEO for Twitter literally fast for an entire weekend just drinking water. Now, I'm not saying to do anything that extreme. I have done a long fast and there's a spiritual aspect to it as you read about in all religious books about fasting. But fasting helps your body just clean. The tidying process is called autophagy and it keeps everything ticking nicely. Cells begin to repair. The immune system repairs. You can, you can fast for 12 hours a day and just eat in a 12-hour window or even better, 18 hours a day and eat in a 6-hour window. Your body will work better than you think. I do believe for us, our, for our health, we need to incorporate movement. You don't have to look at it as exercise. I meet people that literally are refusing to exercise that I've tried to help out recently. And what I can say is don't think of it as exercise. It's not about pumping iron or going to spin class, but you need to move. According to the World Health Organization, some 50% of women, 40% of men aren't active enough in the United States and in Europe. Inactivity counts for 5% of all deaths, 5%. So five out of every hundred people you meet are going to die because they were inactive. So Go for a walk. Walk around your room. Move your body. I personally believe that strength training is more effective than cardio. It's important to do cardio, but cardio can make you hungry. I believe that cardio is important to integrate into your workout, but strength training is just as important. Strengthening your body, strengthening your muscles, strengthening your bones, and there is also a spiritual aspect to dealing with pain and overcoming with pain. The resistance of it is spiritual, and it does allow you to move into different realities because you can literally change the reality of your body, and there's incredible things that you can do. 
And there are new revolutions that are happening in our understanding of how we can change our bodies. And that is going to be a part of it. Right now, you may think that you can never get a better body, but you can. And we're getting better and better at it. Go to a CrossFit gym. Do P90X. Do Body Beast. I'm telling you what, I've done these exercises and they have changed my life. I got up to like 300 and... 20 pounds when I was 33 years old, about 13 years ago. And for about a year, I just got super overweight. And I started doing P90X. Give yourself a routine. The body is so incredible that it adapts. So the thing is, I can't give you one routine. I think the best and most powerful way to exercise is do different exercises. Shock your body. If you do one exercise all the time, your body is so incredible that it's going to memorize all of the chemical compositions of that workout and you'll start just getting into the routine so change your routine i believe that you need to change your routine that's what you need to do they can benefit you and the bliss body course we focus on using meditations to get your your body right and focusing on releasing your emotional patterns and getting into a prescribed five to six day exercise routine in conjunction with breathing techniques and meditation and remembering on a regular basis through certain specific meditations the the blissful body that you can have and bringing those those intentions up and i believe by having good health you can amplify your intentions and whatever it is that you want to do you can do better as your health gets better and it's a part of what you want and it's easy because i've gone through periods where i want to manifest wealth in my life or certain things to happen and i'll forget about my health do not forget about it or take it for granted it was given to you for free you didn't have to do anything to deserve it this body that you have is the most advanced piece of technology that you can even imagine and you have it and it's a trillion to one odds that you even became human in the first place So you're sitting in this incredibly advanced body in an incredible time and age, and you can do incredible things. Studies also show that you can improve your health by sleep. We've talked about sleep and lucid dreaming, but the sleep cycle itself clearly is a good way to heal because during that time, your subconscious can have more time to explore realities beyond anything that you can imagine. So I do believe that we need to understand how to sleep. Now, the things I've learned is that you can sleep in certain intervals. And by understanding sleep cycles is the secret to understanding sleep. Studies show that the length of sleep is not what causes us to be refreshed upon waking. The key factor is the number of complete sleep cycles we enjoy. Each sleep cycle contains five distinct phases, which exhibit different brainwave patterns. So suffice to say, one sleep cycle lasts an average of 90 minutes. 65 are normal or non-REM sleep, 20 minutes of REM sleep, and a final 5 minutes of non-REM. The REM sleep phases are shorter during earlier cycles and get longer during later cycles. If we were to sleep completely naturally, with no alarm clocks or other sleep disturbances, we would wake up on the average after multiple multiple 90 minutes. For example, after 4.5, 6 hours, 7.5, or 9 hours but not after seven or eight hours, which are not multiples of 90. In the period between cycles, we're not actually sleeping. It is a sort of twilight zone from which we are not disturbed. You you know when you sleep that you remember little times when you sleep. And the idea of a deep sleep for a long period of time is rare. And if you are doing it, you may not remember. So focus on the number of 90-minute cycles that you do. A person who only sleeps four cycles will feel more rested than somebody who slept eight to ten cycles but was not allowed to complete any one cycle because they of being awakened before it was completed. And so they're saying that completing the cycle is important. So tune into your body. What I'm telling you is just a piece of information that can help you to better understand. So understand we talked about conscientiousness as being a secret to long-term longevity. And we must be conscientious of the way we sleep and the food that we eat and the way our body. Another thing I think that can help your, your, your health out is one of my mantra vibration meditations. Just going through mantras as in transcendental meditation can reduce problems that you have with your health. A randomized controlled trial found that selected mind-body stress reduction intervention, the TM program, significantly reduced risk for mortality and strokes in men and women with coronary heart disease. These changes in clinical events were associated with lower blood pressure and psychosocial distress. 
So transcendental meditation, which is nothing more than doing a mantra vibrating your body, may be able to activate certain parts of your body. And I do believe there is power in it. So the best thing I can do is tell you there's some resources that I found. I'll give you some links that can also help you. Like I said, go to the advancedsuccessinstitute.com and inquire about our Bliss Body course. We might be able to help you out. There's the Hendrix Institute at www.hendrix.com and they have resources for conscious living. They're an international learning center that teaches core skills for conscious living, assisting people in opening to more creativity, love, and vitality. Corehealth.us, advancing studying disease to understanding health. This innovative process moves beyond treating symptoms to truly freeing each individual of internal energetic decisions, which is what we've talked about. Uh, Another one I found is the Body Talk Center. Body Talk is an astonishing, simple, and effective form of therapy that allows the body's energy system to be resynchronized so that they can operate as nature intended. Another one is holographic repatterning, which you can find at repatterning.org. Quantum change made easy. The resonance repatterning system is an energy process that can help identify and clear the patterns of underlying issues, problems, or pains you're experiencing. Of course, I believe clinical hypnosis works in one. A couple good websites are asch.net and bsch.org.uk. Hypnotherapy is a valuable therapy which will release past traumas and decondition to establish habits. Those are some good links. We also offer guided, something similar to hi- hypnotherapy, guided quantum transformations, which is part of the Bliss program, but we also do separately. And those could work as well. There's Inner Resonance Technologies, which you can find at innerresonance.com. I-N-N-E-R-R-O-S-O-N-A-N-C-E.com. They have, when I looked at it, they have seven steps to facilitate you making certain inner agreements that set the conditions to allow your own automatic nervous system to rebalance and harmonize itself physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, transforming all parts of your life. You can go to Instant Emotional Healing at instantemotionalhealing.com. And they have healing acupressure for the emotions. Uh, There's a great book, Acupressure for the Emotions, by Peter Lambrow and George Pratt. And I recommend it. It's about energy psychology, which we've talked about on other episodes of this podcast. Then there's NeuralinkGlobal.com. And they're starting to look at the neurophysiology principle the brain governs, optimum function of the body systems, and leveraging the brain's abilities to restore the body. Uh, the emotional freedom technique I cannot tell you enough about how powerful this is in controlling subtle bodies one website you can find more information is emofree.com emofree.com there's the healing codes I recommend that thehealingcode.com you can discover how to supercharge your immune system help your body heal itself and turn on your natural healing system to heal your pain, stress, fear, depression and disease you can use color healing Um, There's some different websites on that and look that up. Um, Colorhealing.com is one and it's interesting. I I was going to talk about that, but they've done studies where you can utilizing different colors, frequencies of color. Also by in, in meditations, you can imagine colors. For instance, right now, imagine a red ball in your hands. And by using these imaginations of colors, visualizations, you can decrease pains and actually heal your body. So there's some interesting studies in using color as meditation. So just understand, it may be related to a system. It may not be related to whatever issue that you're having. You want to look at the whole entire body and commit to making health a priority. Don't give up hope. Whatever you're going through, I promise that we can find a way to fix it and that there is a way for us to overcome this. Whatever it is, I think you can do it. Don't let your emotions get buried. Don't try to distract yourself away from your uncomfortable emotions. Feel them and release them. Make an intention to say your feelings can be released. Be free. Breathe consciously. Eat healthfully and consciously. Eat your food healthfully and consciously. You know the things that you need to avoid because your mind knows those things. Sugars, unhealthy chemicals. I don't need to make a list and this is not a diet podcast, but you, you know in your heart what is good for you to eat and what is bad. Listen to your body and recognize when you need to rest, play, have fun. Okay? Understand your cycles. Monitor the cycles. As we said on another podcast, chronobiology shows that we have cycles of positivity, of creativity, of all kinds of things. Usually in a 90-minute interval. 
and understand that how it is. You know, a great way that you can accomplish these things is be creative. Creativity is a way to heal your body because that state of creativity is when you're relaxed, having fun and open to a future. And when you want, are creating a project in the future, your body wants to heal yourself to create that project. I'm going to tell you perhaps the greatest solution for good health is laughter. Make it a priority. People have shown scientifically that you can heal your body. You can join laughter clubs, watch comedies, but laughter as an exercise is a way of instantaneously quantum jumping your body into something else. And laughter is a way for you to hack your own true healing processes. In you is a spark that can heal anything in your body and you can do anything. And we'll be creating meditation soon that can focus on this. But I want you to know whatever it is you're going through. And if you're in great health right now, I want you to remember this. I want you to mark this and create an anchor for it. In your next meditation, restore this memory of your body. And you're going to create a trans-dimensional place that you can come back to at any time. And as we learn and as our technology expands and we have quantum computing understanding the body and the bodily processes, as we start to see physically with scientific proof that the brain is healing the body and as we invoke these powerful healing energies in our body we can transform the world and we can achieve great things as a healthy and happy society we can do this and you can do it so i'd love to hear your stories if you've healed from something i want to know how you did it it's my life goal to help people that are struggling and one of the hardest things is health it's a spiritual thing. But if you have overcome something, I want to know how you did it. What was going on in your mind? Let's document this. Please join my Facebook group at Reality Revolution, where we can openly discuss these issues after the podcast. And I would love to openly discuss all of this because I'm still a student and I'm still learning these things. And you can teach me more than I can imagine. And I would love to hear your perspective on this. If you've seen people that have gotten healed, if you have a, a, a new techniques or things that you've used, there's so many more things we could discuss on this podcast, like acupuncture and acupressure and psychic surgeries. But you can do it. And the worst thing that I've seen, I've seen this multiple times recently for people that have gotten older, is when people give up. And I think the greatest thing that we have as people die because they don't want to live anymore and there's so much to live for as we start to understand the true power of our minds the future is going to be incredible and wonderful and it's worth living long enough to live forever so join this reality revolution with me and maximize your true health i want to thank you please email me at brian at advanced success institute.com if you'd like to get coaching go to my website at, at advanced success institute.com you can find all of the podcasts on the reality revolution.com it is a joy to have you join me and i can't wait to talk to you soon on our next podcast thank you so much for joining the reality revolution